Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the October 2022 Mechanics M1 International A-Level at Excel exam. This question here um, is about these connected particles. The particle P mass M attached to one end of a light and extensible string. Another particle Q, also of mass M, is attached to the other end of the string. The string passes over a small, smooth pulley which is fixed at the edge of a rough horizontal table. Particle Q is held at rest on the table and particle P hangs vertically below the pulley with the string taut as shown in figure 4. The pulley P and Q all lie in the same vertical plane. The coefficient of friction between Q and the table is mu, where mu is less than 1. Particle Q is released from rest. Particle Q is released from rest. The tension in the string before Q hits the pulley is kmg, where k is a constant. Find k in terms of mu. So let's put some um, information in this uh, diagram. All right, so we have here um, the weight. Let's put the weights first. We've got the weight of P and the weight of Q. Okay, so the weight of P and the weight of Q acting, of course, vertically downwards. That's mg, mg. mg and mg. Q is in contact with the surface of this table, so you're going to have reaction force vertically upwards, which is R, which is also, in this case, going to be just mg. All right, you're going to have the tension in the string, which is pulling on Q this way, and it's kind of pulling up on P this way, and the tension in the string is kmg. Okay, it's a light and extensible string, so the tension is the same all the way through the string. Okay, so that's the tension there, tension there. And um, we also have the fact that this is a, a rough, uh, a rough uh, surface. So when you, um, the system is released, there's going to be friction acting, opposing the motion of Q, which is going to be heading this way. So the acceleration is going to be in this direction. Okay, it's going to accelerate like this. So that will be F and F max will have been reached because it is moving. So this is going to be F max, which is equal to mu R. F max, the maximum value of friction has reached because it's going to move, and that's equal to mu times R. Okay, so now we have the forces acting on this system on P and Q. So if we consider P, for example, and if we consider P, I'm going to take down as positive for P as it's moving downwards. I can say mg minus kmg is equal to its mass, which is m times acceleration. And if I consider Q and take this direction as positive as it's moving towards the pulley, I can say that kmg minus mu r, so that's mu times mg, is equal to its mass times its acceleration. So I have these two equations now, and I want to find um, k in terms of mu. So what I can do here is I can eliminate the ma straight away by they're both equal to ma, so they're equal to each other, right? They have the same mass and acceleration, so I can just equate these two each other. I can say that mg, or if, if you can think about it as subtracting the two equations or whatever, but I can say this is equal, they're both equal to the same thing, so they're equal to each other. So mg minus kmg is equal to kmg minus mu mg. So we've got to find k in terms of mu. Now what you notice is they all have mg in them. So if I divide everything by mg, this becomes 1 minus k equals k minus mu. All right? And we want to find k in terms of mu, so we want to make k the subject. So we have 1 plus mu is equal to 2k. So therefore, I can say k is equal to uh, 1 plus mu over 2. So that's the value of k. 1 plus mu over 2. And that answers... Uh, part a of this question k equals one plus mu over two all right it's just a, few, a bit fiddly with all these letters which you don't have actual values for but it's just you know algebraic type of manipulation that you have to get used to all right now for part b it says given that q is initially at a distance of d from the pulley so we know that d is a distance here of whoops this is, q is d from the pulley so if, oh, actually that's really put it there from before Make that a bit th thicker. Okay, so we know that that distance is d 
Q is D from the pulley. Find in terms of D, G and mu the time taken by Q after release to reach the pulley. So as we said, it's accelerating in this direction. And um, we have some equations that we can use here that might help us with the acceleration. Okay, so let me just take these equations here. Oops. And put them on this page. All right, so these equations here. And we also worked out um, in this first part of the question the value of k. k was 1 plus mu over 2. So that's also probably going to help us. So k equals 1 plus mu over 2. All over 2. All right, so now we can use this hopefully to work out the um, the time taken. So what we're going to do is we're going to use SUVAT here, SUVAT. Okay, so we're going to find in terms of d, g, and u. So s is equal to d. That's the distance it moves. Okay, u is equal to zero because it's released from rest. V, we don't know. The acceleration I can find because I know that if I take, for example, uh, the first equation, I can say mg minus k mg equals ma. I can divide everything by m. I've got g, g minus k times g equals a. And I know k is 1 plus mu over 2, so I have g minus, and I have g times, or g over 2, you can say, times 1 plus mu is equal to a. So if I expand this, I'll have g minus g over 2 times, uh, sorry, let me just expand that, g minus g over 2 minus um, mu times g over 2 equals a. So g minus g over 2 is g over 2 g over 2 minus mu g over 2 equals a so i can say that therefore a is equal to if i take g over 2 as common 1 minus mu okay g over 2 times 1 minus mu so that's a the acceleration is g over 2 times 1 minus mu and we want to find the time this is what we want to find so if we think about the equations we got s and u and a and t to deal with we don't know what v is so s u a and t we have to find t so we can use s equals u t plus a half a t squared all right so if we use uh, s as d and u as zero and t as t which we have to find plus a half times a which we just worked out is g over two times do it like this a half times g over 2, okay, times um, 1 minus mu, that's your a, times t squared. So you have d is equal to, this becomes 0, that becomes g times 1 minus, times 1 minus mu, times t squared over 4. So therefore we can say t squared is equal to uh, 4 times d, over all of this which is g times 1 minus mu so therefore we can say that t is equal to the square root of 4 times d over g times 1 minus mu so there's the answer to part um, b now again it's a very algebraic kind of manipulation type of questions a lot of students don't like that but you have to just keep everything. It's like the same as if there were numbers, except you're just dealing with letters and you have to just, you know, don't get confused by that. That's all. all right? It's not too difficult. So there is, we're just using SUVAT. We know the acceleration. And, you know, because we can, you know, we, we can just find out that we know what K is from, we worked out what K is. We can work out the acceleration in terms of G and mu. And we know the distance in terms of D. So they want in front of D, G and mu. The time taken so we use that formula then it says describe what would happen if mu is greater than or equal to one give a reason for your answer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to here i'm going to take this little section that we've got here and i'm going to look at that and see if that will help us to <coughs> decide how to think about this so of course make that a bit smaller it's too big so I've taken that section that we had before and we're going to see what happens when mu is greater than or equal to 1. So let's think about this is the tension and this is the, the friction. Okay, so let's think about what happens. We know that the tension 
is equal to k times mg. And we know the tension, k is equal to, as we worked out before, 1 plus mu over 2. So that's 1 plus mu over 2 times mg. Okay, that is the tension. And the friction is equal to mu times r, so it's mu times mg. Mu times mg, that's the friction. Okay, so uh, let's compare these two with each other. Or let's compare these two with, with, with each other. Okay, the mg's are the same. Okay, so the mg's are the same. They're the same in both of them. What's different is the, this, you've got mu on one side for the, uh, you've got, sorry, 1 plus mu over 2. And here, that's for the tension. And here for the friction, you have just the mu. Okay, so if mu becomes bigger than 1, okay, right now we can see that the tension, if mu is less than 1, okay, if mu is less than 1, then the tension is going to be, um, Now for part C of this question, we're asked to describe what would happen if mu is greater than or equal to 1. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so um, let's have a look what would happen to Q. Uh, let's have a look at this section here. So I'm going to take this section and copy it and place it over here so that we can see what's happening. All right, so that's just a section showing Q and the table. And on this side, you have the tension. On this side, you have the friction. Okay. And so we have tension on one side, okay, which is kmg. And we have friction on the other side, which is uh, mu times r. So kmg is basically, we know that k is equal to 1 plus mu over 2. So this will be 1 plus mu over 2 times mg. And this will be mu times r is equal to mg. So here we can see that the mgs are the same. Okay, so the only difference between these two expressions is 1 plus mu over 2 and mu. So let's think about what happens when mu is, for example, um, when mu is equal to 1, when mu is equal to 1, then this becomes 1 plus 1, which is 2 over 2. And this is 1. So when mu equals 1, the tension is equal to the friction. And if mu is greater than 1, if you make this mu greater than 1, what's going to happen is um, the tension is going to be, for example, if this is 3, or so even, so for example, even this is like, uh, for example, 1.5. Okay, that will be 2.5 over 2. Okay, and that will be... If you make that into 1.5, that would be 1.5. So 2.5 over 2 is less than 1.5. 2.5 over 2 is going to be 1.25. So if you make this even bigger, for example, if mu becomes 3, this becomes, when mu becomes 3, for example, um, this is going to become 4 over 2, which is 2, and that's 3. So um, tension is going to be less than, when mu is greater than 1, the tension is going to be less than the frictional force. So therefore, we can say that when mu is greater than or equal to 1, then the tension is going to be less than or equal to the frictional force. And if the tension is less than or equal to the frictional force, the maximum frictional force that you can generate, therefore, you can say the system will not move. The system will not move when it's released. The system will not move when Q is released neither of those particles will move because the frictional force will be enough to counteract the tension in the string. Okay, that's when mu is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so remember the value of mu being bigger and bigger helps the friction, uh, magnitude of the friction get bigger and bigger. All right, so that's how we could uh, kind of like, what's the word, justify the answer. So if when mu is greater than or equal to 1, the tension is less than friction, so that's the reason why the system will not move. So what will happen? The system won't move. Why? Because the tension is less than or equal to the maximum friction. Okay, so that's how we can understand that um, part C. Two marks. All right, and that concludes this question number seven from this paper from this um, October 2022 Mechanics M1 
international A-level at Excel paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will have found that will be found in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of connected particles um, can be found in the um, playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.